Hello, this is Sunil Sundaraj with Jersey Sporting News. Uh, today, I'm happy to be speaking with Maritza Melendez, recently named the new men's volleyball head coach at Rampo College in Maui, New Jersey. Coach Melendez, once again, thank you so much uh, for taking some time out to speak to you today. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay, named the, the fifth uh, head coach in program history. So right off the bat, uh, Coach, I had to ask you, what does this mean to you personally? Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to coach this team. Um, I'm excited to bring a different kind of feel for the game. So I actually played for Puerto Rico. Um, so I'm mm. going to be teaching them like the international style of volleyball. Okay. Um, it's exciting. It's a very yeah. exciting feeling. The men are excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's terrific. Um, hey, let's just uh, talk about the 2022 20, team. They had a very successful season. Went 17 and 13, won the ECAC championship, the sixth championship in program history, and first since 2012. Three players named to the all tournament team. So this team is definitely on the rise, built for success here coming up in the 2023 uh, 23 season. Excuse me. Just talk about that. I mean, just the fact that inheriting it, just a, a really solid, you know, team that has got a nucleus as well there, uh, Coach Melendez. Oh yeah, they they had a very great uh, good season. Um, and talking with them, they're excited to kind of bring it to a next level of play. Um, we're gonna probably be introducing some different styles of uh, attacks and plays within the season. So I'm looking I'm looking for for the season to be a dominant one. Yeah, no, definitely. And let's talk about two players specifically: uh, Andrew Finnegan and uh, Connor Charlo. Uh, it said uh, Andrew definitely it said. Uh, uh, Flores, you know, said this past season, named to the Skyline All-Conference First Team, First Team all in jack 277 kills in the season, 15 assists, the team high, 26 aces, 145 digs. Just uh, talk about uh, Andrew first, uh, Coach Melendez. Sure. Andrew is coming in as a strong player this season. Um, he's a true leader. He's actually been getting the team together on the off season to do open gyms. Um, he's showing that the kids that haven't really had that much touch of the ball, he's been teaching them little techniques on the side. I'm looking for this to be a, a season that he breaks some records for his own, his own self and probably maybe some records out there that stand yeah. now. Yeah, no, definitely. And let's talk about Connor Charla, all and Jack honorable mention, first team, all Skyline, Skyline men's volleyball scholar athlete of the year. I mean, just incredible accomplishments, you know, by Connor uh, this past season. Just talk about him as well. And just, you know, bringing, you know, said, uh, you know, those contributions to the table here in terms of his leadership as well and his skills, yeah. too. Yes, he's another great leader. I've met with him also. Um, he's looking forward to starting this team uh, strong, leading them on kills and serves. Um, and he's probably one of the only kids from the team that's out of state. So that's mm -hmm. also great. I'm trying to get more out of state kids, but he's excited. Yep. He's shared with me that he's looking forward to this season. He's looking to the changes that are going to be made. Um, him, he he's actually a very good leader in terms of getting the kids together, making sure they're on time for strength and conditioning as well. So they've been working together uh, in, in terms of being the captains of the team. Both of them are my captains. So they've okay. been leading the team very well so far. Yeah, no, it's fantastic news to hear. You know, you brought up an excellent point. Now you're really, you know, gearing up. You know, I mean, we're, we're going to be here before we know it in January. So talk about, like, you know, how everything is sort of panned out so far in terms of preparation. You talked about strength and conditioning, you know, getting, you know, the players, you know, again, you know, ready for a grueling season coming up again. Uh, just uh, what what does a daily schedule entail for you, uh, Coach Melendez? Um, so I actually met with the team. We had our first team meeting. Um, okay. I kind of laid out the rules and regulations with them. We actually yeah. kick off our non-traditional season on November 1st, which is where I can actually do hands-on training with them. Okay. Uh, I did tell them they need to be prepared, even though they're doing strength and conditioning with the coach. I said, yeah. I need you guys to train on the, on the side, go to the gym, do a lot of calisthenic work. Um, yeah. I'm trying to make them as fit as possible just because the technique that I'm going to be showing them is a little bit more fast paced than what they're used to. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I told them to be prepared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what, from your perspective, uh, I know we're still a couple months away, but when you look at, uh, at the at the schedule and then the NJAC uh, per se, 
what what do you see in terms of you know where you know this team can go uh, you know in terms of repeating and you know again having a, just another you know spectacular season uh, just talk about that as well uh, coach melendez so i do see them having another great season um i i did kind of view other games from last season i will say mm-hmm. that i didn't see anything as a threat in that perspective, because I do believe these boys have the motivation and the drive that they do want to take. They want to have another competitive season. So looking forward to that. I am a very competitive person myself. So Mm -hmm. I did explain that to them that, you know, I'm, I'm bringing my energy to the team and expecting them to kind of either get to the level of play that I was at or better. That's my goal for this team. No, oh, that, that's terrific to hear. So I'm wondering, like, uh, January 17th, 2023, the, the regular season opener at Rutgers Newark, followed by the home opener at the Bradley Center, January 21st, versus Wisconsin Lutheran College at 1 p.m. I mean, just talk about that excitement, that build up, you know, to, you know, that uh, time, you know, I mean, I'm sure I could see you in your face just glowing. It's just, it, it, yeah. it's going to be, you know, just a really special moment for you, uh, Coach Melendez. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I've been telling them every time I've spoken to them that I can't wait to get on the court with them. I can't wait for our season to kick off just the drive and the passion that I have for this game. It's something that I really want to instill in them. Obviously they love the game too, because they're playing, but it's, it's a different vibe. That's what I was trying to explain to them. It's just a different way of seeing the game, understanding that first touch to the setter's hands, to the attacker, reading every single play before it even the ball comes on our side of the net. That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to get them to do and just to to communicate. Like I'm expecting this team yeah. year to this year to be different. Like everyone's talking in the court. It's going to be a different kind of an energy. I think that people are not used to seeing. Um, I'm just excited. I just really yeah. I can't get to, I can't wait till November first. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I mean, this is the real time, you know, to build up that chemistry, that bond, you know, with the players and with them amongst themselves as well. Uh, I, you know, I wanted to go back to uh, switch back, you know, of course, with Connor, what he was able to accomplish as a scholar athlete, because, yes. you know, we're talking about student athletes here as well. So the fact that, you know, balancing that time out, time organization, you know, I, I wanted to ask you about that as well, because there's so much rigors, you know, in terms of practices, training, the games, you know, itself. Uh, just talk about that component as well, Coach Melendez. So uh, this year we're doing something a little bit different. I actually am going to do earlier practices so our non-traditional okay. season. Uh, we're going to kick off a 1.30, 3.30. And then in our season, our practices are actually going to be 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. I already okay. told the, the guys to block off that window. Um, and then we'll have our games. So I'm trying to make mm-hmm. it easier for them to balance their schedules because yeah. normally it would be in the evening, like practices, stuff like that. But that's also complicated with how the school runs their schedules for classes. Yeah. So I try to make it a little bit easier that way. No, uh, that's great. Hey, amazing facilities at Randall College, the Bradley Center. And then you talk about uh, even with the strength and conditioning, you know, swimming pool. I mean, they, they have everything there set yeah. up perfectly. Just talk about, I mean, when you first walked in there to the Bradley Center, just what, what you know, was falling through your mind? Just, I mean, just, again, a, uh, a fabulous place, you know, to, you know, play, a, you know, a set volleyball. Just talk about that, Coach Melendez. So, yeah, once I walked into the center, you could see that the facility is has everything that an athlete needs. Uh, yeah. It's super clean. It's hot. Um, I have to say at the schools, and I think this is probably one of the nicest environments that I've seen for athletes. They do have everything yeah. they need, um, even readily available for the coaches. On Like, we're allowed to use the equipment, too, to work out. We have our own mm-hmm. locker room. So everything is just clean and, like, high tier. Yeah. Yeah. The amenities are, are just first class. I mean, they've just done, done a wonderful yes. job, you know, said with uh, the Bradley Center. And what to uh, also ask you about the administration mm-hmm. athletic department, interim mm-hmm. athletic director, Jen Kozlowski, president of Cindy Yard, Jeb, uh, just talk about your interaction with them and just uh, just the process also what led to this. I mean, this is, you know, I'm sure quite a bit, it was extensive that went into, in terms of, uh, you know, with the interview process, accepting the job, just, just talk about uh, that as well. Cause that's important to have that, that structure in place in terms with uh, the administration athletic uh, department as well, uh, coach. Yep. So I had a interview with like a board of people. It was uh, like a, 
long table with a bunch of people to ask me questions. And then after mm -hmm. that part of the interview process, they brought me into Jan's office and he basically asked me to share a little bit about myself and like the background of myself in terms of coaching. And I think it was just the passion and the drive and everything that I was ready to yeah. bring to the table is what Jan connected with. And yeah. uh, he automatically looked at me and said, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my, my head coach right now. Yeah. So it was, it was great. I mean, everybody on staff is amazing. They've been super helpful in getting me on board of what needs to happen because a lot of things do occur over the summer time frame where mm -hmm. schedules are made and certain papers have to be filled in. So, you know, coming yeah. in a little bit behind the eight ball, everyone's been great just getting me there to catch up on everything. And I've even reached out to other coaches, just introducing myself, just confirming the schedule and everyone's been, everyone's been so welcoming. So it's, it's, it's been yeah. nice. Yeah, that that's super to hear is that, and I think you brought uh, another uh, said good point is that you know we're talking about the other uh, coaches you know said with uh, the programs within Rampo College the fact that you know you can bounce you know ideas and you know get instant feedback in terms of the culture and what you're trying to build there as well, uh, Coach Melendez. Yes, no, that's great. Um, hey, I wanted to. Uh, uh, ask you about your previous stops. You recently, as I said, coached the, the boys uh, team at uh, uh, West Milford High School and then were the coach of uh, Hawthorne Christian Academy from 2012 to 2014. So just uh, if you wanted to, uh, you know, just describe those experiences as well, Coach Melendez. Absolutely. So I'll start with uh, the Hawthorne Christian. I actually uh, okay. had just moved back from Puerto Rico and uh, took over it was funny. The only thing that changed was the coach. So it was the same group of girls. And if yeah. anyone knows anything about Hawthorne Christian, it's a very small school. So I literally mm -hmm. had, I think it was seven players. Okay. And the <laughs> year prior they had, I believe it was only like six wins, 14 losses. And I came in kind of ta taught them my style of playing and mm -hmm. turned that team into a team that went into counties, almost took States. It was a flips record, 16 wins, four losses. Um, mm -hmm. And till this day, I still stay in communication with those girls. That's the kind of coach I am. Like, you know, yeah. I kind of help them. They've thanked me. A lot of girls going into college, you know, uh, it's been good. And then I came here, took over the boys team at uh, West Milford High School. It was a interesting experience because they had a great record prior and I lost almost all the boys just had like two returning players okay. and basically I had to teach volleyball to everyone on the team. Um, my libero mm -hmm. actually never, ever played volleyball. <laughs> okay. He was a senior and he legit, I think he hit over, uh, I want to say it was almost 170 or close to 200 digs in his season. So I was able to teach them the concept of the game. And a lot of those boys are now actually playing club uh, where I'm assistant director to a, bo a boys and girls club volleyball team. So yeah. you could see that the, the drive is there, the passion. I just, I got them to see the game at a different level. I had boys that played soccer that became my middles. And when I tell you, I had like only two players that knew the game. It was an interesting season and parents came up to me and they, they made me laugh because they said we weren't expecting to win any games. You know, I think that's interesting is that you have uh, players, you know, uh, our athletes from different sports that come into play volleyball because everything, you know, definitely relates to one another in terms of, their skill set. Talk about that. You know, I mean, that that's interesting as well. I find that fascinating that they can contribute and they can definitely excel, you know, even on the volleyball court as well. Coach Melendez. Oh, absolutely. I always say if, if a kid's an athlete, you can you can teach them to play any sport. As long as they have the natural ability of the speed, the agility, the vertical jump, you know, mm -hmm. they're coachable, which is the key part, right? Because yeah. you can have an athlete who's not coachable, but if they're coachable, then you can turn them into any athlete that you want. So um, I'm wondering when, when, during the course of a game, and I'm sure it's, it's going to really, when, when you take that court the first time, it's, you could, I mean, the adrenaline is going to be flowing through you. Just, just talk about uh, what, what, what goes through your mind? Like, you know, in terms of the preparation, even before the start of a match, but then, you know, once you get into it, uh, just, just talk about those experiences, uh, Coach Melendez. So I am the coach that uh, I, will observe the other team as it's warming up. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see the kind of way that they swing, attack, what the setter favors, what the outside favors. And then I grab my team together and I'll kind of tell them what I saw. 
the mm -hmm. game and adjust like my defense in that aspect. I am the coach that I do stand up in the matches and mm -hmm. you'll hear me like kind of calling out like balls up to kind of get my boys to react. And I've been, mm -hmm. you know, I already told these guys that I'm like, listen, I do that, but I expect you guys to be doing that on the court. Yeah. Um, I, I just read it. I just read the game and every aspect, like I'll yeah. try to read the setter. So if I could read the setter and tell when the setter is about to do a back set, then I'll like in my timeout, I'll tell my middles, Hey, look for this cue. This is what they're mm -hmm. doing. And I have to start prepping them to be able to read those kind of signals as well. But it's, yeah. it's an energy inside. I, I, yeah. when I say I love this game, I love this game. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely, it, you know, I, I see it in you. Uh, hey, I wanted to ask you also about uh, being the assistant director of the Eclipse uh, Volleyball Performance Club uh, in Wayne. You've been doing that for uh, since 2020. It said uh, director of networking recruitment. It said just a uh, again uh, a sprawling facility. I think I, I was reading thirty six thousand yeah. square feet, offering clinics, camps, and individual uh, lessons, but also uh, training as well. Talk about that uh, being a, uh, a a part of that uh, as well, Coach Melendez. So uh, I love being a part of it. It's when I came back from Puerto Rico, it was kind of hard to find people that coached like me. And the owners actually, he's Jamaican. He played okay. for Team Jamaica and the other guy played for Trinidad. So our styles mesh and um, just being there, the environment. So we have all top quality machines um, for volleyball, like service machines, hitting machines. Um, we train our kids to play volleyball international style. And we start from the very basics. Like we don't care if you're the superstar in your high school, we'll mm -hmm. still break down the game for you so you can understand the why behind the movement yeah. um we have incorporated as well we do strength and conditioning so we actually have catalyst performance um taking our teams once a week and the elite teams are twice a week so they do the strength and uh, uh conditioning and and i'll jump in myself as well yeah. <laughs> so i like training with the kids i like yeah. showing them like listen if i can do it you could do it um it's just an overall smooth transition for these kids a lot of them mm -hmm. come in saying to me like wow i've never I, I have been playing for so many years and nobody ever corrected this you know even yeah. the boys that we have in the club they've come from all over new jersey and they've come and they've played in other clubs and they'll say like wow we've never no one ever corrected me no one ever yeah. taught me this and that's what we're about we're about teaching the correct style the reason behind it not just telling you hey fix that we actually like telling them the why behind it so they understand and then you yeah. can see little by little like these teams they dominate like eclipse in uh in tournaments like this is the first year we have boys but mm -hmm. uh the girl side we, we make a name we make a name everybody knows who eclipse is when we go out to these tournaments and eyes are going to be on us this season because we have a boys team now yeah no it's that's uh, terrific it went to ask you so it popped into my head in terms of technology as well like if that plays a a role in of it in itself like you know with especially at you know uh at um Eclipse of Volleyball Performance Club. Can you talk about that as well? I'm sure that because, you know, with other sports, you have that where, you know, you can examine, analyze, like, you know, in terms of a player's, you know, development, just in terms of their skills and fundamentals. Has that been something, you know, to tap into as well, like going over, watching, you know, film, especially like, you know, matches? I'm just uh, curious about that as well, Coach Melendez. Are you asking for the college or for the club? Uh, for college and club, like even like, you know, at the club level, uh, have they been also like, you know, sort of diving into that, uh, into that f arena so, as well? Honestly, we haven't. I know a lot of people okay. use huddle. Um, yeah. Well, we haven't. I, I always say you can, a game's never the same, right? Yeah. So you can observe a game on tape, but then get there. And when they're warming up, you just see something completely different. So mm -hmm. that's why I like to actually just watch the warmups ups. Yeah. and the hitting lines and observe what they're doing that gives me a feel of the kind of game we're about to have versus yeah. watching a game they've played yeah no i agree hey i want to ask you you said you you played semi-professional volleyball for uh puerto rico did just talk about that i mean I, I think you know to let people out there those experiences how impactful they were and just you know just the the significance of it uh you know as well coach melendez so, yeah, so I played for Team Guaynabo. Um, it was an outstanding experience. You get to play with other countries, uh, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, mm -hmm. like traveling to their countries and then coming to us. You know, it's it's 
it's ritual. You bring something for the other team, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of connect on that level. But as soon as the whistle's blown, you know that, okay, that's my competition. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end, we all hug. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a yeah. different vibe. Like, we hug. We say, hey, good game. Like, we chit-chat a little bit. We got to check out, like, the different places. Um, the bond, I would say, playing on that team has been – an experience that I try to carry on to every team I coach because mm -hmm. I try to, I try to show them that, listen, like you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you have a teammate that's not doing good that day, then everybody else has to pick up the slack, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what we've learned. Like, you know, my kids, everyone that I've coached always makes fun of me because I, I do get on the court and I'll show them why I was a libero because mm -hmm. of my speed. Like I can cover yeah. an entire court still at yeah. this age, you know, and, <laughs> and I try to show them like, Hey, this is what it's about. That's what it is. This is what yeah. volleyball, this is the difference. Um, but yeah. it's been, it, it, it's in my heart, like forever, like that, that experience, I, yeah. you know, still have my uniforms. Um, it's just, it was a beautiful experience for me. Yeah. Definitely a lot of pride and joy. I, I have to ask you all, uh, also, you need a strong support system. Your family, uh, you know, I'm obviously I, I'm sure very proud of uh, of this uh, accomplishment. You know, I said being named the men's volleyball head coach at Rampo College. Can you just talk about the support from them along this journey? Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, so my parents and my husband and my kids and my brother, everyone's excited. And the one comment they had kind of said to me, they were like, I didn't doubt it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, they're like, we, we just know you. You have a vision and you go for it. And, you know, they're super supporters. They'll be at every game, the home games. Um, my parents, including like my mom's 70, my dad's 68. They go okay. to every game that I have that's close to them. And uh, they cheer it on because they know that. I love this game. Like they, yeah. they say it to me, they're like, when you're excited about something, you just, you see it in your face. And they yeah. always say to me, this is what you're meant to do. Like you're meant to coach, you're meant to teach other people. And they, they kind of share with me that when they see me coach, they see something different. Like they mm -hmm. see the teams grow from the beginning all the way to the end of the season and how I talk to them. Like, you know, my kids, uh, they, they play volleyball too. And my, I always laugh cause my, my girls will say to me, they're like, mom, you're like the nicest, meanest coach I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you make it fun but when you get mad and you know it's time to get serious like you yeah. you let it be known you yeah. know so they've been very supportive they're excited for the journey you know and my oldest one's actually graduating high school this year so okay. i even told That's her great. i was like hey let's go look at ramapo like it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, wonderful to hear hey i before we came on the air uh, i I told you know, as you women in sports, it's just the fact that you're breaking barriers here. You know, so that this is important. You know, the fact that you're coaching a a, a men's volleyball team. Uh, just talk about that in terms of, you know, having you know, basically you know, setting the example for other you know, said uh, female coaches. You know, being able to hey, did anything is possible. That this can happen. You know, so you know, just talk about that. You know, just. I'm sure that uh, that maybe has run through you know, the back of your mind, but just talk about that, uh, Coach Melendez. Yeah, so uh, it is, right? It is, it's a hard thing for a woman to get into. So I always, uh, you know, I was in the Marine Corps, right? So that's also a male-dominant world. So in mm -hmm. this aspect, it was funny because I actually shared with my husband that, you know, I said, I'm, I'm meant to do this. I was like, I'm meant to coach a men's team. I said, because I connect with them on a different level they respect me as soon as I walk into a room, you know, my mm -hmm. backstory a little bit too, when I share with them, um, it, it's something that's doable. Like, I don't like where, where we live in a bubble sometimes where they see like, Oh, you know, women need to coach women. No, we don't because we bring a different, a different level of play to the game and a different mm -hmm. passion to the game. And we teach these men, you know, to basically continue with the respect level. I already told my, my guys when we're traveling away, I, sh I shared this with them. I said, you, you guys will be in button down shirts and khakis on the bus. I said, yeah. I'm going to dress up to the nine two, including my heels. I said, we get there. We all change over. I said, you guys will change into your uniform. I said, I'm going to change into my I said, business. I said, but we're going to have the class and the respect to show them that this is what we're about. So mm -hmm. it's a different level. I think when a woman steps in just, you know, not nothing against the men coaching, but I think it's just, it's a little bit harder now, right? Because the they're going to test me. They're going to see yeah. what they can get away with and what they can't get away with, you know? And I, I already drew the line in the sand, even our first meeting, 
you know, I had a kid that just was late and I literally said to the guys, I was like, Hey, for every minute they're late, you guys are running. So they already know like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Coach Melendez, like she's, <laughs> she's yeah, really down the like, law. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, 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 I, I, I think that's, uh, it's great. You know, definitely, again, we go back to building that culture and you know you said you want to have that in place you know said before you even you know take the court hey when you talk about the game of volleyball itself the growth of the sport and how the game has evolved and changed over, over the years i wanted to ask you from your again from your perspective what you've seen you know how it's transpired uh oh, over the years a lot <laughs> a lot has changed so <laughs> Uh, when I actually graduated high school, the year after is when they introduced a libero position. So prior mm -hmm. to 98, there was no libero position. It was just like, you're going to get subbed out. Um, and you had to serve over the net. Like if it hit the net, the ball, then you lost a point. So that changed yeah. as well. Now it could hit the net, it could drop and you get the point. So these things that have changed have actually excelled the game. And I think it's because they noticed that it was taking too long mm -hmm. the game. So that's why they changed so many things over the, over the decades. Right. So now yeah. we have the libero we have that you can have uh, in the club level, you can have two liberos that you can swap out with your middles. Um, you can go under the net in club ball and in collegiate ball, but not in high school ball still. Mm -hmm. So there's like little different rules in every level. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not interfering with a the play, they don't make the call. Uh, I, I think the, the refs have even changed too. So they, they look at different things now over the years, it was just black and white, like basic, you know, and now they have to look for so many other things like the differences of carries where the setter's hands are. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're trying to just make the game faster which is great. Cause I love, <laughs> I love the speed of the game, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't really see it changing too much unless they change where in high school, they allow like the foot fault. If they allow like to go under the net, not the football, but to go under the net, if a setter's trying to get a ball, mm -hmm. I do hope they change that for high school level ball, because it kind of, I feel like it confuses a kid once they go from high school to club or from high school to college, then they're kind of like confused with the rules so I think I would love to see that it gets kind of leveled all across the board so that mm -hmm. there's no confusion with these kids. Yeah, no, I agree. Hey, uh, before you get the final word here, uh, Coach Melendez, um, I was wondering, I think you're in a great spot, what your message is maybe to the younger players out there, uh, especially club, high school, uh, whether it's, you know, younger girls or boys, and then yeah. even the, the uh, people who are attempting to break into the coaching ranks. I think you have a lot, uh, as said, in terms of experience to offer and like, you know, what you would say to them, because it is very competitive out there. It's challenging yeah. times we live in, but uh, just in terms of moving up the ladder, but the, just what would you say to them if they were watching this interview? So starting with the athletes, I will yeah. say, don't stop dreaming or believing in yourself. If you have a dream and passion to play at a collegiate level, then yeah, you have to put the work in, you know, um, getting to that level does take hard work, dedication. So instead of, you know, texting or being on social media, go and grab a ball go mm -hmm. train on the side on your off hours, you know, ask a friend to bump with you or, you know, whatever sport it is, just put that as a priority, you know, mm -hmm. uh, make it your school and your sport. And then everything else can come after, because if you have a goal, you really have to accomplish it and you have to put the work in. It's not just going to come to you. And mm -hmm. I also say, don't be afraid, reach out to college coaches, you know, don't be, don't be timid. Don't be in your shell. Send an email. You'll, you'll be surprised that a coach will answer you and they may show interest because you, you stepped out of your boundary to, you know, to reach out to a coach that's for mm -hmm. the athletes. And for coaches, I say, yeah, same thing, right? Set your goal, have a vision and shoot for the yeah. stars. You know, I honestly believe that anything you put in your mind is possible. Same concept, put the work in, you know, I, I do say that I, I believe that my journey is just beginning in the collegiate world. I do see mm -hmm. it excelling. Um, like I, I say to many people shoot for the stars, right? The sky's the limits. I, I, I don't believe in the word can't. Right. Yeah. I think I think people utilize that word too much. I believe in the word that you can and you will get to where you want to be. Yeah. No, well said. OK, uh, Coach one does you get the, the final word and message here uh, for family, friends, former teammates and coaches? Uh, 
you know, teams that, you know, I said, of course, uh, at, you know, West Milford, Hawthorne Christian Academy. And then, of course, now your new home here, Rampal College, uh, you know, the administration athletic department, uh, student body and the fan base out there. Uh, I give you the floor. All right. Uh, well, all I'm going to say is that I, for those that have been in my path in the past, thank you for all the opportunities, even from playing to coaching. Um, I am excited. I'm looking forward to a great season. Uh, I can't wait to break barriers, not just as a coach, but as a, as a team and, 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 you know, staff member in the athletic division of Ramapo. I am looking forward and hoping that a lot of you can join us and see us play this season, support us. Um, for those that I've coached with in the past, I hope to see you in the, in the, in the future in one of these games as well. So I just thank everyone for their support and uh, believing in me and uh, seeing me through this journey. Well said. Hey, uh, Coach uh, Melinda, it's just an incredible honor and privilege being able to interview you. Uh, again, congratulations. Thank I you. said I'm becoming the new uh, men's volleyball head coach at Rampo College and uh, wishing you all the best uh, here in the uh, 2023 season. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.